Hello friends, Witty Weasel here to guide you to the ninth inner circle. Be wary, for the stories told here make most souls threatened of their existence. If you have not subscribed, please do so, for the dead appreciate it. This story in particular is a work in progress, for the dead like to keep secrets and the dead like to keep it that way. But if we all support this realm, we could uncover all of its secrets. Thank you, and let us begin. It Whispers by Witty Weasel Dark are my thoughts this night. Malicious malice undoing any sense of reason or doubt. I write this without delay, for my final hour is nearing its closure. My name does not need to be shared, for that's the only thing keeping me alive. Least long enough to explain why this story must be written. The truth must be exposed, or other nameless souls join this bottomless tomb. This is my story. It is late November in Silva, North Carolina. My brother, who recently acquired a cabin off the mountainside, passed away two weeks into living there. This sudden loss was a heavy burden to me, for he was all the family I had. For this reason, the cabin was entrusted to me. Always, my brother and I dreamed of a cabin in the mountains, far from the scrutiny of the city. Nothing but peace and quiet. Following that dream, I canceled my apartment lease and moved everything I had to this new paradise. What a fool I was to put all my eggs in one basket, especially with my only proof being pictures and words from a deceased loved one. I arrive at the cabin on the 21st around midday. Not long after leaving the car, something seemed off with this place. Sure, the pictures were true, but the feeling did not match what was described. The warm light of the sun which illuminated my path leading up was now a deep overcast of ash and shadow. It seemed the very atmosphere sucked up what light could break through these trees. A deep mist blurred most that was around me, but from what I could see, there was a circle of different sized trees around this place yet they all emitted two similar traits. Their branches, all twisted and deformed, were pointed directly at this said cabin, and they were dead. I began my exploration with the front porch. Besides one chair on each side of the front door, the integrity of the wood itself looked promising Entering through the door, the windows on each side of the wall illuminated the only room to this place. In the left corner, a small kitchen with a wood-burning stove that needed some maintenance. On the right, a single bed and dresser to accommodate my needs. This is my new life, I whisper to myself. No cell service no unnecessary human contact, only my peace of mind. If I only knew, this would be a fool's illusion. Evening descends upon my new home. What I found so odd was how much darker the woods became, each tree shaking and creaking to the cold wind's command. The illusions they made 
stirred troubled thoughts into my mind. I made sure to get my supplies inside the cabin before this madness overtook me. I was never afraid of the woods at night, but being alone through it all made me question that fear. A fear I had hoped never would fall into fruition. I'm lying on the bed, looking up at the ceiling. After some tough love, the wood stove's fire was renewed and brought forth dancing flames of shadow to observe. I found comfort in the accomplishments I have achieved for the day. With how life has turned out for me, it's hard to see the positives through so much grief. My eyes grow heavy. The shadows continue to dance above me. As I continue to fade into sleep, the shadows begin to dance in unison. This one shadow in particular begins to absorb the other dancers. Is this my mind playing tricks? Each dancer submitting to this new presence. The last dancer is slowly devoured by the now large silhouette on this ceiling. I can't stay awake any longer. My eyes burn to even think about opening them. Then I hear it, close to my ear, raspy, malicious, evil.